Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I'm uh, doing a first look here at the Jolly Cloud operating system, which is uh, sort of a custom version of Ubuntu Linux, which is made with special social uh, media aspects to, to make the experience of using a netbook a little bit more social. This is an alpha release right now. There's still some bugs to work out, um, and it's, uh, it's only available with an invite right now. The, um, the Jolly Cloud team is sort of slowly rolling it out to reviewers and bloggers and journalists and eventually to the wider public. Um, you can try to get a copy by signing up now at jollycloud.com, but uh, it might be a little while before you get your uh, your access. So uh, when you first launch, it looks a lot like Ubuntu Netbook Remix, because that's essentially what this is based on right now. Eventually they're going to do away with this and have the entire interface look a little bit different, and it'll look probably more like this, which is the Jolly Cloud application that launches um, here. And so what you see when you first load up is a, a dashboard, and the dashboard gives you notifications from your contacts, other people on Jolly Cloud uh, or using Jolly Cloud, what they've been doing. You can subscribe to uh, groups, people, all sorts of different things. So right now I'm sub subscribed to Tariq Krim. He's the um, uh, founder of Jolly Cloud. Um, also subscribed to uh, the Jolly Cloud uh, team for updates, so I'll find out more about what's going on with, uh, with them. And I see messages here saying things like Tariq Krim, Krim uh, installed. Uh, Flickr, he's uh, installed the Boxy application or the YouTube application or different people that he's following. Uh, here under the Updates tab, you can see a list of uh, system updates. This is the alpha that was just released uh, today or yesterday, so there's not really too much in the way of uh, updates. Under History, you can see your own activity. So it says, Brad Linder is now using Jolly Cloud with the EPC 1000H, which is the uh, system I installed this on. Uh, it's worth noting I have to actually use this with an Ethernet connection right now because I'm running it off of a USB flash drive, and it just, uh, I don't know if it's because of the flash drive or because of the hardware, but it didn't recognize the wireless. I also tried this with an EPC 1008 HA, and it didn't recognize either the Ethernet or the wireless card. So, again, there's still some kinks to work out here. It's supposed to eventually work with most Intel Atom-based uh, netbooks. Uh, so that's the dashboard. Let's take a look at applications. And this is where things really start to get interesting, is um, you can install a number of different applications, which are both desktop applications and web-based applications. So for example, uh, you see over here some traditional desktop apps like uh, Skype. You can install Skype and make uh, phone calls, voice over IP, um, uh, communication, or video chat with, uh, with your friends, and that just installs Skype as if it were another application on your desktop or uh, Boxy, which is a media center application, uh, Wine, which is a utility for Linux that helps you run certain uh, Windows applications, things like that. But then you'll also see icons for applications like Twitter, Google Reader, Gmail, Facebook. And if you install these applications, what it'll actually do is create a desktop uh, icon back here in the Ubuntu Netbook Remix uh, section so that you'll see something like this Facebook icon that you can click on to actually launch Facebook just as if it was another desktop application. Um, so those are the featured applications that we're looking at here. There's also applications uh, that are listed as accessories, development tools, education, and under education has Wikipedia and Notely, uh, games, graphics, and under graphics, it has Cheese, which is a webcam application that comes with a lot of Linux distributions, and Flickr. Under Internet, you have, uh, instead of just having Skype and uh, Firefox and Pigeon and the usual things that you would expect, you have uh, Google Talk, Google Reader, Twitter, Gmail, Mebo, which is a web-based uh, instant messaging application that's actually quite similar to, to Pigeon in that it works with a number of different protocols, AOL Instant Messenger, MSN Messenger, and so forth. Uh, under Office, we have Google Docs, Zoho, Office, uh, Open Office. Uh, so you have a combination of web-based and desktop-based Office applications. And under Sound and Video, the same thing. We have Boxy, which is a media center application, VLC, which is a uh, media player, Miro for downloading video podcasts, but you also have YouTube or the Cloud Player, um, which is a sort of almost a web-based version of iTunes in a lot of ways. So, um, so you have this ability to install applications and then launch them just like regular applications. Um, under Settings, you've got uh, you can create your profile and manage who you're subscribing to, what kind of groups you're subscribing to. 
And then there's a blacked out lab area here, which I assume will have something more interesting eventually. Uh, just to show you what I mean in terms of launching things, I could click on Firefox and load a web browser or Pigeon to, to launch uh, the Pigeon Instant Messenger, but I'm going to click Facebook instead. And what's going to happen is it's going to open up a single use window that just goes straight to Facebook. And I believe, I could be wrong here, but I believe what we're actually using is uh, Mozilla, Mozilla Prism. Uh, which is sort of like a single window version of Firefox. So it's got the same Firefox rendering en engine here, but it just loads up straight to Facebook. And um, I'll go ahead and close that. And that's pretty much it for, for now. That's Jolly Cloud First Look for Lilliputing. I'm Brad Linder.